the first tanks appeared in the final period of World War I. These were large and slow-moving bunkers. But like during World War II, the German army wanted a bigger tank than what the other nations possessed, which could destroy any possible obstacle. In June of 1917, the German War Ministry ordered the development of a new super-heavy tank intended to be used in breakthrough operations. Design work was carried out by Josef Vollmer, a reserve captain and engineer working for the German army. Vollmer was originally an automobile designer and engineer and a pioneering tank designer. During the course of his career, he was granted 450 German and foreign patents. Josef Vollmer died after delivering a lecture in the Volkswagen factory in Brunswick in 1955. On the 28th of June 1917, the German War Ministry approved the draft design and ordered 10 examples. Five to be built in Berlin and another five in Kassel. The vehicle originally weighed 165 tons, but this was reduced to a more practical 120 tons by simply shortening the length. The official name of this new tank was Großkampfwagen or simply K-Wagen, which could be translated to English as large fighting vehicle. The huge size and mass of the car wagon made it impossible to transport by rail, so it was decided that it would be split into four sections for transport and reassembled behind the front line near where it was to be used. The hull of the final car wagon consisted of six modules that could be transported separately by rail the control room, the fighting room, the engine room, the transmission room, and two sponsors. The commander could give orders to the crew by means of electric lights. Fire control was comparable to that of a destroyer, so the Germans seeing the vehicle as a kind of land battleship. The drivers would have had to steer the vehicle blindly, directed by the commander. The car wagon was to be armed with four 77mm fortress guns and seven machine guns, and its crew was like a small army inside the gigantic tank. It contained 27 men, a commander, two drivers, a signaller, an artillery officer, 12 artillerymen, 8 machine gunners and 2 mechanics. At the beginning of the project the incorporation of flamethrowers was considered, but this was later rejected. The car wagon never became operational. Two prototypes were built, but were still incomplete by the end of the war due to the lack of raw materials and other demands for weaponry. These prototypes never left the factory and were finally scrapped under the watchful eyes of the Ministry Inter-Allied Commission control. It is interesting to note, however, that the British Army developed a very similar project. The so-called Flying Elephant was a proposed super-heavy tank but this tank was never built. The tank was fitted with two pairs of caterpillar tracks. The outer tracks resembled those of the Mark I, but were flatter and 61 cm wide, while a pair of additional, narrower tracks were fitted to the underside approximately 6 inch higher than the main tracks. They were not intended to be used for normal driving, 
but were to be engaged to give extra traction over rough ground and would have helped to prevent bellying, so the tank becoming stuck on higher ground between the two outer tracks. Many sources claim that the main armament, a nose-mounted cannon, was a standard 57mm 6-pounder gun. Other sources, however, state that it was a 75mm or 13-pounder gun. A 6-pounder main gun for, for such a heavy machine would have meant half the main armament of contemporary vehicles. I personally think that it would have been very interesting to see these two gigantic vehicles in action in World War I battlefields as they cross the trenches or maybe even in a tank battle against each other.